Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about MariaDB or MySQL and Galera. And Galera in Portuguese I believe is crowd which is very fitting because this is a way of having replicated databases over multiple data and in this case, when you're talking about multiple databases and replication, you want to have an odd amount of them. You want to have three, five, seven, or something like that, because you always want to have one witness that can say, or one uh, that can actually say where the data is right or wrong. If we have a split in the databases and one side thinks that this is the correct, thing and the other side thinks something else, then you should have something that could be in the middle and say, okay, this is the correct one. So you always want one extra vote in order to say which of the two halves are the correct solution. Um, so we're gonna set up a little bit cluster of three hosts. So let's switch over to my screen here. And first off, we need to install MariaDB. So these servers I have here are Debian Bullseye, just normal install, fully upgraded. And that means that you have MariaDB 10.5 and this should work with 10.4 and above, at least uh, maybe even earlier, but the guide that I'm following and looking at is running from 10.4 uh, and above. And what you do is pretty much configure MariaDB with some extra configuration and then it becomes a cluster. So we're gonna go look at that, but we also want to look into what can we do if it actually crashes. And we have a bunch of different scenarios. If it crashes where just one database is crashing, what do we do then? If two of them are crashing, so we only have one left, what do we do then? Uh, if we have a split brain situation that we have one database uh, that thinks one thing, another that thinks one thing, and one that is crashed, how do we solve that? And so on. Uh, so let's see here, we have all of these installed. So now we want to configure Galera. So we go into uh, MySQL conf D and there we can put an extra configuration file. So this is our Galera configuration. I will copy paste this in on node one here. So first off, we want to put the bin log format into row. We want to have a default storage engine of InnoDB. It only works with that. You know, DB auto increment lock mode should be two. And then we want to bind to zero, zero, zero. So the port is available globally. And then we want to um, also set VS rep on. So the, it is uh, replicated on in this case. And then we want to have the rep provider. It should be USR lib galera libgalera smm.so. So there, that's placed there. If you have an other distribution, this is probably installed, but the location may vary. So be sure to look where your system actually installs this SO, but it should work on other distributions as well. Then we want to give a cluster name. So I just said that this is a Galera cluster. It doesn't really matter if you just have one, but if you have multiple clusters, then giving each of them a name is a good thing. And then we say which addresses are in this cluster. So these are the three hosts that I set up at the moment. The big sync method we have here is rsync. So it will do the major syncs between the host using rsync. And that is pretty fast. And then we have this rep node address. And this specific one is called 55. So this node is 55 and it has node name one. Then we have 57 and 59 as well. So I can store that configuration here. Now I also want to set up MariaDB so it actually is secure. So we want to run MySQL, oh, MySQL secure installation. So we want to do that. We set the, we don't want to use the Unix socket and we use the password that is empty at the moment. We want to set the new password. I'm gonna be very simple here and set uh, QWERTY, you should set a better one. We remove your user, disallow root login and remove test database and load privileges. So now we have set up the secure database. 
So now I only need to do the same thing on the other host here. So we'll edit this one. I will change the values a little bit here. So it's actually node two. So there we have copied in that. And uh, let's do this secure part here. MariaDB, MySQL DB, secure, installation, no, yes, Berti. and then everything is secure. And then we do the last host here. Configure that one, Galera. Change the IP and the node name here in my configuration. I will copy it in. Let's try to copy it in again. There you see, node 359. So that's the last configuration. And we do the secure part here as well. MySQL. Secure installation. And this is very important that you actually make the installation secure. Because you don't want to run on socket, then they can't really talk to each other. So that's a very important configuration part. What we want to do now is actually stop our uh, cluster. So we want to stop our databases. So Currently we use system D on these, so system CTL, status, uh, MySQL, D service, so it's running here. So I want to stop it. Let's stop the MySQL service, because we have changed the configuration, but we don't want to start it the same way. So here we want to stop these services, but now we want to start it by saying that this specific one is actually the start of this uh, database replication. So now we want to run Galera and then uh, new cluster. So we want to set up a new cluster with Galera. And if I do that and then check again my status, it is started as a new database. Now I could go in to the next one and just start it up. And the third one, I should be able to start that as well. So these should start up normally. It will take a little while for them to actually sync up and be in sync. But now I should have databases that are in sync. So if we go into MySQL uh, with the username of root and password, uh, we can check a bunch of things. First off, we can uh, show the databases. And we see here that we don't have any special database. Uh, and in this MySQL database, if we use that and show tables, we have a couple of extra tables here. VS rep cluster, VS uh, rep cluster members, and streaming log. So if I select start from VS rep cluster member, you can see here that we actually have these three members. So node one, node three, two, and node three. If we, on the other hand, check the other one, we can see here that we, in this cluster, uh, with this UUID here, we have a sequence number of three. So that is where it actually is at the moment. It's using protocol version four, and it has a bunch of capabilities over here. But this number over here, three, is important because when it's crashing, you want to figure out the node that has the latest, newest data and actually start with that when you want to get up and running. Uh, so this uh, three here is very important and you could use it either in the database or you could fetch it from disk. So let's add some data to this database then. Uh, so let's go to node 2 and I will fetch a database here and let's go apt install uh, zip because this is a zip file so I want to unzip this MySQL sample database. So if I go into MySQL now, root with password and then I can say source 
and this uh, SQL page up here. Then we read in a bunch of different rows and we are in this classic model, so I can show tables here. If I now go to node three and go in with my SQL root password, uh, sudo uh, with my password here and use classic show database. Databases. Use classic models. So we see that a database is here. Select star from customers. So we see also that we have a bunch of data here. So we see that the replication actually works. So let's say now that one of our databases crashes. Uh, so if we just stop MySQL here, MySQL D. So now it's stopped. This database is no longer running. And we, we say that this died and it's totally corrupt. If we go in here and use MySQL and select uh, the SREP cluster members, from we see only two of them so we are missing one but luckily they are in sync at least so we have only one of them have crashed but they keep in sync and hopefully will not get a split brain so now we just need to get this one running and let's say that it has crashed totally so I need to actually reset it I will go into var lib MySQL and just remove the full database here because it's it's not running at all. So now I can start my database again here. Uh, even if it's clear, so it hasn't have any data in it, I should be able to start it up. And if I go into this database now and uh, show database, we see that we have our classic model again models and uh, select star from uh, customers customers spell and we see that we have all our data here of course we could do a database dump from one of the other databases and read it in here before we actually start it if we think that that is a faster case uh, the rsync is a pretty fast way of syncing up the databases, so you might not need that. It all depends on how secure you want to be. Um, if you want to do that, then you should go into your uh, configuration file and turn on the, off the replications for now. So if you turn it off here, you should be able to read in a dump and then turn it on again. Uh, and it should be fairly safe and not destroy any data for you. So now we say that this database has stopped over here. And we also have the case that one more database is stopped. So we have two databases that are stopped. So we want to be able to run this one it's still around and we should be able to show databases here but we the other ones are either corrupt or not up and running and replicating from this database in the case either of a split brain or in the case where we actually don't uh, have any other nodes then we need to actually bootstrap them so we can set a global variable here and say VS rep provider options PC dot bootstrap equals to true. And if I set that, I should be able to start the other servers and they should be going up and become synced. If you don't do that, then you are in, and you are in a split uh, brain scenario, they can't really figure out what is the truth and sync up. So 
that is one thing to keep in mind that you need to actually tell it tell the search system that if I have two databases and they are split brains, so one database think one thing and the other think something else, then you can go in and set this variable on one of them and say that this is the one that has the canonical data. I know that this is the truth. Um, so that's the uh, a, a really good way of um, uh, handling your uh, split brain situation. But now we also have the last case. Everything went down. Uh, the whole system crashed. So now we need to figure out how we can get the system up and running again after a total uh, down uh, case. And if we turn down all the databases now, stop them all. And we stop this one as well. So now nothing should be running. All the databases should have stopped. You can have a status here. So this is stopped. Uh, let's check the other ones as well. So now we don't have anything up and running. Now we need to figure out which one should I start. So th this is the whole data center is gone. We have nothing up and running. We need to start this cluster again. And they can't really start because they are totally different. All of them have different uh, opinions on what is the right solution. So then we can go in here and say Galera recovery. What this does is that it runs the MySQL server, starts it up and just figure out where what is the position. So it says here 36. That is the sequence for that one. If we run it on the other ones here, they might have different numbers, 35, and this one has 34. So we know that one has the most recent data here. So this is the one that I want to start first. And I also want to check another file here in my MySQL data, uh, data there, the graph state. If I run that uh, with sudo, I can see here that this, specific server is safe to bootstrap. If it's at zero here, then turn it into a one. So edit it and set it to one. So you actually tell the server that this server is allowed to bootstrap the process. So let's start it as a new cluster. Because we know that this server now is the canonical one that has the latest data. So let's start it up as a new cluster. And we should be able to start the other ones as well because they have the data that is more, <laughs> um, is older. So when we start these up, the cluster should be up and running again as normal. And we can go in here in the database and let's see. There we go, we open up the database, we use the MySQL system and we select star from VS rep cluster members. And we have all three cluster members up and running and we are at the sequence number of 39. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.